Hello. So uh, yesterday and today, and today we are going to work, I'm going to work with my shoulder and the relation from the shoulder to the rest of myself. And I invite you to join my practice. At least, at least that's my plan for today. Let's see how it pans out. So from the le lesson yesterday, which is uh, how to massage your back or spine like a chain in the official terms. Um, I was trying to cram a one hour lesson into 20 minutes and it didn't work. Uh, at least maybe it serves as a kind of um, reminder or I'm very open for experimentation. So that was the experiment. But Today we are going to uh, spend the time together, to, re to really spend the time to, to work with the shoulder. There's, we cannot rush this kind of learning. Every kind of learning has its... So we will start in side lying. If you already want to start with the movement or just get into side lying while I'm still talking. I lost that thought. So ah, this kind of, I mean, some kind of learning is very quick, like when you touch uh, the hot stove. Well, this is very fast. You only do this once. You learn in two seconds that you can't touch things that are too hot. But this kind of learning, it, it takes time and we need to spend the time. So let's spend the time for learning about the shoulder, basic shoulder movements. How, what can we do with shoulder? How, how good can it feel? Let's make ourselves feel good, marvelous. Let's improve the shoulder. And you see, I've touched thousands of shoulders probably. And is there a common ground in shoulders? Let's try to find a common ground. So the first challenge is to lie down. And uh, we need the right height. If there's a lot of tension, you need, you probably need a higher cushion, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. And then I will put my microphone here. And um, please come to lie, yes, on your side and really lie on the side, not turn forwards or backwards or twisted, just on your side. So smooth surface, not too soft, not too hard. So you can feel the floor. We're working with the floor. The floor is our friend. This is the earth. This is the floor is part of the earth. This is where we are born and where we will die. I guess. I hope. And this is what's always here. The floor is always. I mean, some people go to extremes to not have a floor and die because there, there was not no floor and then there was a floor. But the floor is our friend. I hope so. So relax on the floor. We need to feel the floor. Make the floor our friend if it's not, but it is. It's always there. Can't say that of all things. and just feel, feel your breathing. <laughs> There's some people, when I mention the word breathing, the f it goes like, <sighs> <sighs> they will just inhale like crazy and then exhale. Uh, when I say, get, be aware of your breathing, just continue to breathe. Just breathe normally, but be aware, like, when do you breathe in, Where? how long is the break, when do you breathe out, just feel your breathing and feel where, where can you feel your breathing. In theory, the, the chest is like a three-dimensional object and it can expand to the front, to the back, to the left, to the right, up and down. But of course, there's the floor, so you can breathe only against the floor. But you can breathe into the room, but then there's 
Ah, there is the shoulder on top of your chest. There we have it. Hmm. See, I'm also taking big turns. A sigh of relief. Or a sigh, I don't know why. And so, just feel your breathing. And feel your arm, your shoulder, your shoulder on top of your chest. So, even if your arm is broken, you can feel your arm resting on your chest somewhere. So I sometimes do this when I sleep or, or not yet, of course, not completely asleep, but close to be being passed out. There's so many different stages of sleep aren't there aren't there so sometimes you sleep but you're not asleep you know what i mean but sometimes you're just passed out especially right after you fell asleep but before that or after that you can feel most mostly before that before you pass out you can feel how your arm is carried by your chest and the arm is moved by the movement of your breathing. Sometimes I use the picture of a duck or a white swan on a lake and there's a boat and then there's waves and the swan is going up and down. We can think of your shoulder as a boat. And just notice how your shoulder is moved by your chest. And if it doesn't push, if it doesn't, if it's not moved, I say in French, push pas, push. In English is a move, in German is es wird bewegt. What's, what's being moved in your language? Being moved. The shoulder is being moved by your chest, by the breathing. Let's make this the slowest video I ever did. If you can, please rest your arm on your side. So most people initially, they will have the palm on the greater true hunter. Mm. But please turn your arm so that the thumb is facing towards the pelvis towards the floor and your pinky finger the small finger is facing towards the ceiling so rest your arm in a inward is it inward rotation inward inward rotation so don't rest your arm with the palm down but with your thumb down so, and balance it find the find a place to balance it and try to rest like this. Try to put this arm in this funny position where it's rotated inwards. Just rest it or even even more. Just try how much can you rotate your arm and just rest it. And release, release, find if you, if there's tension somewhere and try to find it and let go of it. Ah, is this Feldenkrais? We need movement. We need movement. We need movement. Please put your hand behind yourself. Let your arm slip, slip behind you. Let your hand fall on the floor behind you. See, where, where can you touch the floor behind you? Try to explore the floor behind you. 
move your hand up and down on your back and on the floor next to your back just see but don't force it don't don't force any position just move your hand up and down see a little bit in behind somewhere and then you can also don't don't start to do you have to do you have to twist Maybe you can stay sideline and just have your arm behind you. Have your arm behind you for a bit and either explore or, or let it rest. Let your arm rest. Be aware of your breathing, of your breath, of your breathing, of the process of your breathing and see how your arm is moved. by your breath. And I don't know how how is it for you if you have this your arm in this position for long time. I think if I have it in this position for like five minutes it will fall asleep. You have this tingling tingling, tingling feeling of ants and the blood flow will stop and eventually probably will turn blue and then white or something. So bring your arm back on your side or in front. So where did we not put it yet? Up. Put your arm up. Rest your arm on your head. Is it restable? Is it possible to rest the arm on your head? And be aware of your breath. So your right side is, or your upper side is quite long right now. So putting the arm up is, um, I see it in many Feldenkrais lessons. It's an interesting constraint to connect, to force a connection between your shoulder and your, the rest of your self. Maybe you can feel that, like it's, it's, is it? How can we comfort, find comfort in this position? How to turn the arm? You can change I mean, you're free to do what you want. You can, you can, you can change positions of your arm. Change. So we have a. You know. There's, four forwards, downwards, in the back. And up. Why? Why did I have you place the arm, rotated inwards on your side? So we have four. general directions and everything in between. Um, make, make it a little bit of a practice to rest with your arm, not always in the same position, but in a different, different spot. In a different rotation. So wild, break out of your usual patterns, do something new, something exciting, place your arm in this position instead of this position when you're sleeping. <laughs> We're going totally crazy here. <laughs> but it, it's true, it is, it is. It's to place your arm in a 
position where you usually don't have it while you rest. It's <laughs> it's, it's unusual. Okay, we need movement. We need movement. We need movement. So instead of just placing your hand and your arm, push your hand away and drag it backwards, uh, back towards your center. Push it away from your center. And you can take breaks whenever you want can like your arm is at the far end of your arm uh, your hand is at the far end of your arm so you use your arm to push your hand away commit to the floor submit to the floor give yourself up to the floor be on the floor be the floor no don't be the floor be yourself on the floor push your hand away and see what do you have to move what do you have to bring into motion to be able to push your hand away and bring it closer towards yourself? How do you rotate your arm? Please feel free to rotate your arm in any old way, in any new way. Let your head roll, let your breath be free, independent from your movement. Or you can sink your breath and your movement. I don't know for what reason, but... And then there's like the four general directions and everything in between. Like reach further down. Like to really reach down on your side, you have to lift your head so you can really push down your shoulder and behind you. And how do you, how do you have to move to be able to push your hand downwards behind you? So that's a, that's quite a big action. Wow. Oh, to push the hand downwards. To really let your head follow, let your head move, let your whole self participate in that pushing down of your hand in, in your back or to the back. And how is this a Feldenkrais lesson? And how is this not a Feldenkrais lesson? How does this kind of exploration deepen your understanding of what is the Feldenkrais method of somatic education and what it is not? Hmm. What are our techniques for learning, for improving learning, enhancing learning, for making, to, to speed up learning, to become... Um, resourceful to become to have an understanding of how our learning functions and to have an effect uh, if you think of the floor like, like as a white paper and your hand has a color like a coloring stick or a brush and you look around which parts of the floor did you not color yet? Which parts of yourself did you not color? What color did you choose? Blue, white, green, red, yellow, purple, pink, orange, gray, black.
If your shoulder is damaged, there's places you cannot go. But there's always places you can go. There's always something available. So stay in that, in that area where it's easily available. Don't force yourself. Don't put yourself in pain. Stay in the area where you're comfortable. It's like a conversation with yourself through movement, through your, through being physical, a physical being and embodied, embodied. I'm not sure if I like this word, but it's very modern, embodied and disembodied. <laughs> I, I like, like in our culture, we had theater, like the old Greek already had theater, uh, comedy and was we could always speak to the actor. The actor could always speak to the people. And then there was television. And suddenly we couldn't talk to... Or you, you can write what you want in your comments and I will read it. And that's our kind of conversation. But suddenly... That, 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 that's new. So we invented the word interactive. So we have this interaction. Before there was no interactive word because everything was interactive. But now interactive is a feature. I, I like this thought. Well, I don't know why I... What was I about to say? I don't know. Ah, yes. In a conversation, we talk about... We need to talk about things we both understand, mutual understanding. We, we can resonate and discuss and it's the same with movement you need to stay in a range that's possible for you to understand and to enjoy because if you don't understand and enjoy a conversation uh, I, I don't know it's not cool you, you won't make progress you need this and trust it trust in it trust in it when you when you move when you explore when you learn when you make yourself feel good in a range that's uh, easily available to you the range of possibilities will grow. You will open up more possibilities by on what I just said. Okay, let's conclude it. How much how, how, how much time did we spend? Spend 23 minutes and then I will edit the video. And let's see, how does your shoulder feel like when you just become aware of your breathing? How smoothly is your shoulder resting on your chest? Where did you choose to put your hand? Is it your usual position or do you rest your hand in a, in a new New, new, new. <laughs> ah, very nice. Maybe on your back. You can take a rest. Or you can get up. Continue with your life. You could get up and see how your shoulder feels like. Wait. You could get in front of a mirror and see how your upper shoulder compares to your lower shoulder. Oh. Uh, Straight? I don't think so. Oh, my right shoulder, my upper shoulder feels feels so much smoother. Of course, the left one was being pressed on the floor, but still, the right one feels very free and smooth. Maybe we continue this tomorrow with a couple of Feldenkrais tricks and concepts. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Please support me and this channel and see you in the next video. Bye bye.